Now, Dad, if something were to happen, you had a massive heart attack, mm -hmm. and and I never got to see you again. What do you? I mean, in all seriousness, do you have anything you'd want to say? So <clears throat> we're all just having a big time here, and um, you know, of course, I'm joking and teasing my dad, thinking he's going to be all right, hoping he's going to be all right. And uh, my dad just, we just took him to the hospital. Um, thankfully, there is a, uh, there's a, an emergency room about literally one mile from here. And so my cousins just, just drove him over there and I'm gonna go over there. He was having chest pain. He, he was feeling totally normal, totally fine. Joking, talking, laughing, hanging out. And he walked down the steps and uh, said he got a pain in his chest. And he just started shaking, and, and my dad's just afraid. I mean, he's just afraid. He doesn't know what's wrong with him. And so, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, so yeah, uh, he just left, and I don't know. If... So anyway, I just, um, I'll keep you posted. All right, so. You haven't met my cousin Kelly, but this is my Hi. cousin Kelly. Hi. You were with him. What was going on? Well, he was giving us a tour of your house, and which is very nice, by the way. And he was all excited, and he was showing all your candles and, and all your artwork and everything. They went down to the basement, and then we came up out of the basement, and we were getting ready to go back out on the porch. And I just looked at him, and I just said, you're not okay, are you? I just saw that flushed look really? on his face. And he grabbed me and Tracy. And, and I knew he wasn't okay. He goes, will you guys please pray for me right now? Pray for me right now, my chest, I'm having pain. And so we prayed, me and Tracy and Mike, and uh, he says, I just wanna get out in the cool air and, and relax and, and see if this goes away. And Tracy couldn't get a uh, pulse on him yeah. or feel it, you know, it was very faint. And that's when we asked you to step in. So oh, no, it should drove be him over here, so. Uh, right. Yeah, and they're, they've been great. They got us in here within minutes of us pulling minutes. in. So the whole ordeal has only been less than like 20 minutes. I know, it's been very thing. fast. Yeah, very fast. So. Yeah, and so they are, so we're, yeah. So they're going to take him to Mount Carmel West, West, another which hospital. Is good, which is very good. But they have, indi well, they, they have um, seen, and they did an EKG immediately, and yeah. they said possibly uh, blockage because he had his. Uh, Bypass 15. We we're, we're thinking 15 years ago. Triple like two, bypass. Triple bypass. Yeah. And then they, he is an AFib. So and the bells you keep hearing in the background are when his heart rate is fibrillating and stuff. Yeah, erratic. So, but he has got to get well. And uh, he is a survivor. And he's in a good place he's to in a be. Good place. To yeah. be having his yeah, heart fibrillating. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they gave him a baby aspirin and all that stuff. Right. They're trying to do that. So he's going to be just fine. He's going to be fine. Yeah, yeah. he's going to be fine. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, Kelly. All right. Say hi to you two. Hi, you two. <laughs> Yay. All right. So one more funny story. Okay, one well, more funny story. How about just one funny story? There hasn't yeah. been any funny yeah. ones. Yeah. yeah. So a uh, doctor comes in to see him and he... They have a cardiologist here? Or uh, just a doctor? I think it's just a regular MD. ER physician. Okay. physician. Okay. Comes in and he tells Uncle Walter, he said... I'll be back to check on it in a few minutes, but I gotta go fix a really bad ankle. And your dad, before he walked out, he goes, don't you forget I get priority over that ankle. He said, that ankle can be fixed later, my heart can't. <laughs> Did you, dad? He goes, this can't I break. I I get priority over the ankle, just remember. He goes, if this thing breaks, it ain't no fixing this. That ankle can oh be fixed Oh my goodness, <laughs> oh my goodness, all right. So funny. Lord have mercy. All right. Bye again. 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 All right, Pops. I just sent Mark a text. Uh, my brother Mark has been out of town all through all of this. He is in Indianapolis, Indiana right now, heading this way, getting here as quick as he can. Uh, everybody knows my, my phone's blowing up again. And uh, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling a little bit better. What, what, what just happened? I mean... Well, we, Kelly said what happened, but I meant, what do you... Well, I've, I felt uneasy all morning, just nervous. 
had a, had the morning coffee jitters, I thought, because mm -hmm. I hadn't eaten yet. I was waiting for the graduation to eat, mm -hmm. and I took a little piece of a Xanax to calm myself down, but it didn't seem to help. And I decided to give them a little tour of the house, and when I went down into the basement, I started noticing a pain in my chest, and and then when I walked back up out of the basement, I knew definitely there was something wrong because I don't normally have chest pains. Yeah, let me let me show them your chest. There's your, there's the scar from my dad's uh, triple bypass, and that was about twelve or fifteen years ago. Yeah, about fifteen years ago. Yep. So they. I mean, you probably have some blockage pops. Yeah. That's causing these issues. They're probably going to put a stent in there or something like that, right? They may cut another vein out of your leg and bypass it, or they could put stents in. Yeah. I don't know why they And you'll be a new man. Well, I worry about your health. I'm fine, Dad. I'm well, healthy I'm as a horse. I'm it all on you with you, me helping you with that landscape. Is that like, what it I'm, is? I blamed it on you. You know, we didn't make doctor. any videos about that. We should have. My shouldn't sciatic we? nerve went out of it. Well, that's because he's grabbing these old big old boulders and bags of mulch, and I kept telling him not to. Well, and Paul, you were. Paul, you is working like an animal. And uh, I, he's filling a wheelbarrow up. He's saying, take it easy, Pops. Take it easy, Pops. I'm begging as, him, begging and him. And as soon as I got back, here, here, let me load that one up for you. Let me load that. I think he was trying to kill me. No. But anyway, I kept pushing that wheelbarrow no. back up the bank. And I'm saying, boy, I'm getting really windy, Paul. But he didn't have any mercy on me. That's but, not true. No, he did try to pet me. I have to say, he did try to pet me. He said I didn't have to do anything. Not a thing. But I begged little, him. I was embarrassed. I was too stubborn. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of work you did for your mom. Well, for I just did it. Yeah. You've just, just done it for yourself. So, so, but you're... Well, the last time I had this happen, uh, when I had two 90% clogged arteries, I'd just come off vacation. I told your mother that I'm going to go get a quarter pounder and I'm taking two books and I'm going to the emergency room. And they checked me out. And they said, you go home and you lay down and you do nothing. And you come back here tomorrow or something, we're going to do a catheterization on you. So they let me go after that. But I was having real sharp pains then. But they didn't keep Does it feel up. anything the way it does now? No, it's a different type. Totally different. This is feeling. a dull pain in my chest. That hmm. was a fright. You ever get frightened with adrenaline? Hmm. But Bam. see, you're not having any of the slurred no. speech. You're not having any disorientation. No. It's so weird how different it was from two days ago, but you know it has to be connected, right? I, I definitely think there's something different because I'm weak and I'm really nervous today. My heart beats twice what it is right now. It's running at 100. Wow. It should be 50. It's at 120 over 95. And it's normally 55. It was 55 when we were in the air watching it because Ann's like, Dad, you're yeah, it's your your heart's banging right now. Yeah, he said it's just. And that's with and half not, a Xanax you took either. earlier today. Yeah, it's not beating regular now either. I made your mom breakfast and this or that, mm -hmm. up and down the stairs a little bit. Ann told me not to, but she was feeling pretty bad too. But I think it's time. Are you ready now to no more up and down the steps and well, get real you comfortable? You got to get up there. and You got to get back down. You don't have to. I can come <laughs> over and take care of you. Well, I'll bring you food. I'm not giving in to that yet. Well, you're going to die if you don't. Well, I'll slide down from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the getting down part's not the yeah, problem. Yeah, I'll get a board and put on the stairs and slide down. So right. Yeah. Then I'll get a rope and tie a top stairs and pull myself up. Now, Dad, if something were to happen, you had a massive heart attack, mm -hmm. and, and I never got to see you again. What do you, I mean, in all seriousness, do you have anything you'd want to say? Well, I have it all written out in a book at home. Do you? Yeah. Everything you want to say if you die. Well, I'm telling everybody what to do. Things that need to be done when a person dies who's in charge of the ship. And I'm in charge of a ship over there. Yeah. I'm my household. And there are things that people forget about when someone dies. Uh, how you get your insurance policy. you got to get a whole bunch of death certificates. I got that all laid out because your mom knows nothing about any of that. And, and you never know when you're going to die, so you don't really know who to tell it to to say, I want you to take care right, of this. Right, because it could change from... Yeah. You know, so so you're saying you have everything written out somewhere. Even But what about personal stuff, Dad? About personal things? Yeah, like... A, I just think it's really... I just think it's really important that I feel like I've had a good life. I've had a happy life. From, and you're going to have a long life, but I'm saying just like in I'm case. Going, I feel like I'm going to live another 10 years. But if I didn't, I have had a really, really 
great life. You're 69 years old, too. I'll be 70 on June the 11th. This June? Yes, so you're and 70. I don't feel like I'm 70 years old. As you said the other day, we were driving somewhere, and I wasn't feeling too good. You might have been taken to the doctor. I don't know. But you said, Dad, wouldn't it be nice? Let's get a car and take a trip. Oh, you know what I love. You love road and, trips. And I, I told your mom the other day, I said, man, I just love to get in a car and have no destination and go anywhere we want to go. Anything at all that you can think of. If well, something horrible happened and you, you this uh, was the last time anybody got I to really see you. I really wish I had had enough sense as a young father. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Hi. All right. Well, we're having a deathbed confession. Well, I mean, I don't know. You never, never know. We don't know. I, 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 do you mind? I'll turn this off. All right, Pops. I know. I'm wearing you out with my camera. It's me again. <laughs> did you go to the bathroom this time? Yeah. Well, and what, did you wash your hands this time? And not only that. <laughs> what? Well, what else would you wash? You asked me, did I wash my hands? And I said, yeah, not only that. Not only that. Never mind, Paul. I'm missing something. Okay. Well, I bet. I, I Explain bet it to me. No, I'm not. Anyway. You washed your. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You were right. <laughs> well, I'll get right to it because you're going to tell a long story. No. You want me to talk about something that maybe uh, that I wanted to talk about. If I if I were going to die, if, if, would I say, is there anything I regretted or this or that? Just, uh, yeah, a, pe la a lasting piece of advice to me or I your kids. I don't know. I do have a piece of advice for people, especially men who have daughters. I regret to this day as a father that I did not have enough sense to know how to treat my daughter and give her more love and show her more love. And sometimes that comes out in your daughter in a negative way when fathers aren't real close. I'm close to my daughter and she's as good of me as a father could be and I love her too. But your mother always, and during our lifetime as I worked and things, she said, I want you to try to be closer to Annie. And it's really bothered me over the years that I didn't. I, it, uh, I don't know why. I worked a lot and I played with you boys and we almost forgot we had a little girl and you boys had a little sister. You boys were so dominant in your lives and Annie just stuck to your mother. And, and I really regret that and sometimes I try to make it up to her. So yeah, I mean I know what you mean. We, me and you and Mark, we're like, I mean we, my dad, we, we did everything. everything. We went everywhere did everything but I don't ever remember Ann being part of that. That's what I felt sad about. And you weren't the kind of dad to hug on Ann and take her right. on dates and just treat her like a princess. You actually had a difficult time with that. You felt awkward. It, it, what, I loved her to death as a little baby and she was a beautiful little girl. It's just, it was not... You didn't know how to connect I with a young girl. I didn't know how to connect to her and your mother would remind me and I would work at it for a period of time. But, but you I, think it, it, it made Anne... I think it might have... I, I understand from, from what a lot of people say that it does uh, make girls act different later in their lives and things like if, that. If they have... But if that's one of the biggest things I've had. And, uh, well, obviously, Dad, you and Ann lives with you. Yes, you guys, Anne, Anne you guys have a great us. relationship. She takes care of us. It's she just, helps us every way she can, and we have a good relationship. We we fight back and forth a little bit, but she knows where I stand, and I know where she stands, and she but, tries her best. But Dad should make an extra effort. Dads should make an extra effort. I, I almost believe they need to take a class like having children. That, uh, uh, But see... They don't teach you in the school in school how to raise children or how to handle money, and your mother took care of that part of the end of the deal as far as taking care of the kids and showing you boys the love and my daughter the love and you guys are all so close to your mom, and my family never was that close to huggy type. Dad is not a good hugger. No, I'm not. Paul told me I'm not a good hugger because I didn't like myself, and he might be right. <laughs> Can I say that? Yes, you had the nerve to tell me I, to give you... Okay, listen, listen. If, let's say you're acting in a movie, and I was like, okay, I know I don't normally hug, or I'm not a hugger, or I'm weird, I'm weirded out around people or something, and I'll... But, but can you just fake a hug? My dad cannot even fake a hug. I will say, Dad, hug me like you love me. And my dad hugs me, and it's like you pull back. Like your body doesn't embrace... It, you. It's like you don't know how to give yourself over in a hug. Like... 
I hug people sometimes, and I literally say, that is like an amazing hug. That felt good. Uh -huh. You have a very cold, well, it, it kinda, distant... It kind of checked me that I need to be more affectionate. I do need to be uh, more that way. And it's hard when that's not maybe in your nature, you know. Right. And I never was mistreated. I had a loving family, and we right. loved each other. We just didn't grab and hug each other every day. We saw right. each other. Well, the Maxwells and, and my boys, they hug and kiss everybody that come along if you saw them two hours ago. I mean, <laughs> I'm not that way. I love them. I show my love. This is a deathbed confession, by the way, that you're overhearing. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of it. You're out of it, honey. But anyway, no. <laughs> I've really had a good life. I've got great children. What else could a man ask for? All right. Well, we're going to leave her out of it, like she said. Turn this camera off. All right. Well, all right. All right, bye, folks.